Hello. In earlier videos, the assigned cost of inventory was always given. In this video, we will see how the cost of goods sold is determined by applying the inventory cost flow methods. There are four generally accepted methods for assigning cost to ending inventory and cost of goods sold. Specific cost, first in, first out, or FIFO, less in, first out, LIFO, and average cost. Specific identification is the actual physical flow costing method in which items still in inventory are specifically costed to arrive to the total cost of ending inventory. Because specific identification is often impractical, other flow methods are, per are permitted. These differ from specific identification in that they assume flow of cost that may be unrelated to physical flow of goods. The term cost flow assumptions refer to the manner in which costs are removed from a company's inventory and are reported as the cost of goods sold. If specific identification is used, there is no need to make an assumption. Now, in order to explain the specific identification method, we assume that Sam's TV company purchases three identical 50-inch TVs on different dates at costs of $700, $750, and $800. During the year, Sam sold two sets at $1,200 each. These facts are summarized in the table below. So as you can see, the different dates for purchases on February 3rd, March 5th, and May 22nd. And the sales occurred on June 1st. Now, if Sam sold the TVs he purchased on specifically February 3rd and May 22nd, then its cost of goods sold is 700 plus 800, it's $1,500. And the ending inventory is $750. It means it's the DV that it was purchased on March 5th and that it wasn't sold. So as you can see, only with three items that we're having here, it's complicated to use this specific identification method. So this is why we're having the cost flow assumptions. In this chart, you see the use of cost flow methods in major US companies. So as you can see, the most popular, it's the FIFO method, followed by the LIFO method and average cost. Now, the first in, first out method assumes that the earliest goods purchased are the first to be sold. So FIFO often parallels the actual physical flow of merchandise, which is generally a good business practice to sell the oldest units first. Therefore, under the FIFO method, the cost of the earliest goods purchased are the first to be recognized in determining the cost of goods sold. This, do this does not necessarily mean that the oldest units are sold first. So as you can see here, when we make the purchase of the first item, the second item, the third item, and this is the order how the items they are getting inside our inventory. So since it's first in, first out, so the first to be sold. So at the ending inventory, we will have the fifth item. It means which is, was the last item to be purchased. In order to better understand the FIFO method, we're having a numerical example here for Sam's TV as well. So we're having the beginning inventory, 100 units, and each unit was purchased as uh, $10. And then we're having the different purchases on April 15th, August 24th, and November 27th. Now, if we assume that we're having 550 units that they are sold, 
it means the ending inventory will be the number of units available for sale, which is 1,000 minus 550 units sold. It means we're having 450 units in ending inventory. So the first step to do, if we are using the first in first out method, is to determine the value of the ending inventory. And since we are using the first in first out, it means what remains are the last to be purchased. And we're having 450 units here. So we're having 400 that they are from November 27. It means 400 times 13. And we still need 50 units. They are from August 24. So 400 times 13 plus 50 times 12. So the total ending inventory, it's $5,800. The next step to do is to determine the cost of goods sold. And we know that the cost of goods sold, it's the cost available for sale, which is 12,000 minus the ending inventory that we have calculated, which is 5,800. So the cost of goods sold, in this case, it's $6,200. Another way to determine the cost of goods sold, it's using the 550 units sold. And since we are using first in, first out, it means the units sold are the first to be recognized as cost of goods sold. So we're having 100 from the beginning inventory, it means 100 times 10 plus 200 times 11. So till now we're having 300 units plus 250 times 12. So if you can, you can calculate uh, these numbers and you will get the same result as $6,200. So you can try it. Another way of thinking about the calculation of first in, first out ending inventory is the Lish assumption, which means last in still here. The LIFO method assumes that the latest goods purchased are first to be sold. LIFO seldom coincides with actual physical flow of merchandise. Exceptions include goods stored in piles such as coal or hay. So the cost of the latest goods purchased are the first to be recognized in determining the cost of goods sold. So as you can see here, the ending inventory, it's the first unit to be purchased. Also, we will use the same example as before with the same figures in order to determine the cost of goods sold using the LIFO method. So as we know, we're having 450 units in ending inventory. Since we are using the last in first out, it means what it will remain, it's the first purchased. So we're having 100 times 10, they are remaining in the ending inventory, plus 200 times 11, plus we still have 150 times 12. So like this, what we are doing, we are valuing the ending inventory. The next step we have to do is to determine the cost of goods sold. So it's the cost of goods available for sale, which is 12,000, minus the ending inventory, which is 5,000. So the cost of goods sold under the FIFO method, it's $7,000. Also another way to think about it, we're having 550 units sold. And since we are using less in first out, it means the units sold are the less to be purchased. So you can calculate it by multiplying 400 times 13 and 150 times 12. And you will get the same number as the cost of goods sold, which is $7,000. Another way of thinking about the calculation of LIFO ending inventory is the fish assumption, which means first in still here. 
So the average cost method allocates cost of goods available for sale on the basis of weighted average unit cost incurred. It also assumes goods are similar in nature. So the company then applies weighted average unit cost to the units on hand to determine cost of the ending inventory. In order to illustrate the average cost method, we will use the same numbers and the same figures. And here, as we know, we're having 550 units sold and 450 units in ending inventory. So here, I'm not interested in knowing the order, which one is being sold first or which one is being purchased first. Here, I'm interested in knowing the cost per unit. So I'm having 1,000 units, and the total cost of these units is $12,000. So I divide $12,000 by 1,000 units, and like this, I will get the cost per unit. So the first step to determine the ending inventory, it's 450 times 12, which is the cost per unit. And like this, I'm having the value of the ending inventory. Now the second step, and in order to determine the cost of goods sold, we're having the cost of goods available for sale, 12,000, minus the ending inventory, 5,400. So the cost of goods sold, in this case, it's $6,600. Another way to determine the cost of goods sold is by multiplying 550 units times $12. Here you can see okay, how the unit per cost is determined. So as we said, it's $12,000. It's the value of all the units or the cost of all the units divided by the number of units available, which will lead us to $12. And like this, we can calculate automatically the cost of goods sold or we calculate the ending inventory. Then we get the cost of goods sold. Now, to understand why companies might choose a particular cost flow method, let's examine the effect of the different cost flow assumptions of the financial statements of SAMS TV. With the same units sold and the same tax rate, which is 30%, we have different net income. And this is due to different ending inventory and cost of goods sold, which depends on the cost of flow method adopted so here as you can see the ending inventory despite that we use the same numbers we're having 550 units sold and 450 in the ending inventory however because we're having the different methods we have different numbers so under FIFO method we had ending inventory 5800 life of 5000 and average cost 5400 since the ending inventory is different than the cost of goods sold will be also different. And also the taxes that we will pay will be different. So under FIFO, we paid 990 as tax, 750 LIFO and 870 under the average cost method. And this led to different net income. In this video, we covered the method, the cost flow methods. And uh, I hope you like this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.